contractor ledger uh, in the contractor ledger what are all the things are required what are all the things should be there um, how exactly uh, the amount given to the contractor either it is a lump sum amount or whether it is a advanced payment or whether it is a running payment how that can be entered into the contractor ledger that contractor ledger that will be there in the government offices and that has to be maintained two copies the first one he has to keep it one more and one more he has to enter the same into the uh, uh, the uh, government offices so that uh, if anything is happen that both should be tallied uh, the contractor has to keep its own personal copy and in that personal copy uh, he has to take the signature of uh, the section officers that is AVJE and uh, of course uh, the AWEs and E the signatures are not required on uh, the contractor ledger only the uh, a signatures are required of course one column will be there that may not be maintained because uh, uh, most of the time uh, if anything has happened in uh, the contractor ledger which is kept in the government offices securely he has to keep it and he has to show it whenever the financial uh, um, wrong calculations or uh, financial wrong billings if that has happened so of course this uh, uh, contract ledger uh, it consists of the date voucher number serial number of the bill so net transactions that is the advance payment or the transactions name of the work or the account particulars of uh, the transactions means uh, uh, there's a bill or whether the NAFTA details whatever that that they have to write it then gross transactions how much debit and how much credit is there and the total up-to-date value of the work or this supplied means uh, how much percentage of work you have completed till date till the advance payment or running bill payment that has to be entered into this column and if any remarks remarks means if any delay in the work for example if he has taken 50 percent of the money but he is unable to complete only 10 percent of the work so then why the 10 percent work is completed because 50 percent of the money is paid to him why the remarks has to be written on the remarks column because most of the time what will happen is that uh, he has to procure uh, uh, the materials lump sum so in that case you have to give uh, more money uh, even the 10 percent execution of the work so uh, this kind of details that should be maintained in the contractor ledger so when the work is completed and the accounts have been settled a note below the financial entries is made in the ink work completed that dash dash that is means work completed from this date to this date has to be uh, written by the uh, the authorities whoever either it is a section officer a and uh, this note has to be signed by the divisional officer means whenever uh, the sanctioning of the bill has to be processed then that bill has to be duly signed by the divisional officer means he has means he has read all the things he has verified it and note that this much complete this much if any remarks is there, that he has to write before processing to the the higher authorities or before processing to the or the financial departments if the total expenditure is in excess of the sanctioned estimate and if the excess is within the power of the divisional officer it is passed by him and the certificate to the effect that effect passed by me is recorded 
a complete completion of plan should be accompanied by a complete completion report of course uh, if the expenditure is more than the uh, sanctioned estimate then uh, actual rule is that he cannot pay uh, uh, the amount excess amount because the estimated cost is uh, lesser than uh, the amount what they are spending on the site normally he will be paid for only the estimated cost the remaining amount has to be again uh, taken approval by some of the higher authorities again they have to made the re-estimate then for that re-estimate they have to put a signature or put the approval of course sometimes uh, the divisional officer means the higher authority can overrule this and uh, the whatever the contractor has paid extra that can be paid and the comments has to be written that effect passed by me has to be written on the recorded of course that extra payment will be immediately that will not be paid of course maybe it will be as adjusted in the next estimate what they are preparing for the next uh, project after completion of the work of construction of other department a certificate for a satisfactory completion should be prepared in a prescribed form and got signed by the local head of the department so each of completion of the work of the construction of the department a certificate of satisfactory for each for example if you divide the hundred percent of work into or uh, uh, 10 divisions every 10 divisions every 10 percent of the work has to be duly signed by okay 10 percent of the work is satisfactorily completed because stage by stage it has to be certified by the authorities normally it can be done by the section officers then normally when the billing process is going on then only the divisional officers or AWEs can uh, sign on the completion of the report as well as the uh, as well as to sanction the bills the completion certificate will be will read as a certify that works and repairs were completed on this and this date and that is in good satisfactory order the completion certificate is signed by the assistant executive engineer that is AWE and EE that is executive engineer and then got accepted and signed by the local head of the department you can take that local head of the department you can take it as a DC that is a district collector or deputy commissioner for whom the construction was carried out normally most uh, his authority for uh, most of the cases uh, most of the construction projects um, final approval has to be done by the uh, district collector only so then normally this completion certificate has to be signed by the AWE followed by E then finally it has to be approved by the with the recommendation of these two people the DC has to uh, put the signature on the certificate the deposits of contractor and refunded after six months from the date of satisfactory completion of work on or expiry of the one rainy season this is very important whatever the security deposits what we are talking about what we have discussed earlier that has to be refunded after six months some cases but uh, if you are uh, doing it for most of some of the highway projects and all those it has to be refunded after two or three years because they will see the progress how uh, it is working on the field or how exactly it is reflecting when it is in the site it may be completed but whether he is going to uh, whether he whether he is maintaining or normally we can call it as maintenance whether his maintenance is there for three years because uh, during making the agreement 
uh, that they will take it as uh, three years maintenance of the roads because uh, if you if you are maintaining of course he will maintain the quality of the work sometimes the satisfactory completion of the certificate will be issued after six months of the progress of the project work completed and after six months of the continuous progress of the project work after that that can be issued even after completion of uh, suppose if it is completed today after six months from today's date it will be issued so that they can realize that uh, they can visit the site at that point even after six months it has to perform with the same manner during this period of observation that normally six months we can call it as the observation period this period of observation the contractor is responsible for any defects or mischiefs in the works suppose if he has not constructed well or if he has not done well in the within six months it is going to reflect if something is not uh, correct or something is not uh, uh, properly maintained then uh, uh, by its certificate completion certificate will not be issued to him saying that only this six months uh, the defect is coming then what about the next uh, three or four years minimum this is more, many times it is going to happen in case of the tar roads within six months of time the tar roads are going to be collapsed so in that cases i don't know how the system is going on in the most of the government departments and how they will issue the complete certificate completion certificate most of the tar roads even it won't come for even three months what minimum they have to come for three years as for the standard code of practice what we are doing it the concrete road has to come for minimum 10 years but this is not happening due to this uh, uh, quality of the work the contractors are not following it so he shall have to make good all such defects and damage within that time if minor damages are there of course the completion certificate will be allowed but if uh, more than 50 or 60 percent damage has happened or if uh, more than 50 percent 60 percent is collapsed then the completion certificate will not be issued to the concerned person so then cash the term cash is used in accounts includes legal tender coins checks deposit deposit at call receipts of scheduled bank and drops that demand drops not only dd we can call it as a drops payable on demand of course this is a cash of course it's a coins and whatever it will use it a small supply of one rupee revenue stamps is also treated as a part of cash balance only normally you know, uh, whenever uh, you are doing it uh, on uh, If you are doing if you are using the revenue stamps during your uh, agreements the revenue stamps are used during the agreement process even that uh, stamp duty if either it is a 1 rupee or 10 rupees 15 rupees that has to be included in the the total amount that has to be given for the contractors or the cash balance of course the debit and credits you already know that debit means expenditure credit means that amount is shown on the expenditure on the work similarly when an amount is credited to a work it means that the amount is to be shown as a receipts under that work whenever the amount is credited i already said that the voucher or the receipt has to be generated either in the form of a computer based or in the form of the handwritten if the small amount is there if you are doing it for the, um, uh, running account bills so vouchers will be generated frequently suppose if you are giving for lump sum so an overall final receipt has to be generated for the person whom we have paid it of course uh, that uh, 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 credit or the debit vouchers are very essential 
uh, for next audits or whenever the things are coming for the verifications because most of the time when you complete the work or uh, after that the auditor will come auditor will verify all the transactions uh, happened uh, during the last uh, um, three years or four years then that voucher has to be kept uh, as a security or for the time to maintain the transparency in the departments the cash book the transactions relating to the actual receipts the receipt numbers has to be entered i already say the credit watches and the debit watches or credit receipts or debit receipts that numbers has to be maintained in the cash book and also the payment of cash are recorded in the register known as cash books the cash book is one of the most important record of the office most of the time the cash books are very important as well as you are whatever you are talking about contractor ledger this contractor ledger and the cash books has to be maintained properly and the records in the contractor ledger and the Our cash books should be same if any imbalances as the normally the auditor who is coming for the auditing process he will verify the cash books as well as that ledgers the pages of the cash book or machine numbers each page is divided into receipt side and the payment side the receipt number you have to write it and whatever the payment of that receipt has to be entered and you have to say that whether it is a c or whether it is a d You have to write it as C as well as D. Even if you see uh, the cash books, they will write C or the D. D stands for debit and C stands for the credit. The receipt side has got five columns and the payment side has got seven columns. The specimen page of the cash book is shown in table two. Even you can see in the cash books. Uh, one is the uh, receipt side and one more is uh, the payment side you can see the date of receipt that you have that has to be entered in that column number of watches or the receipt for that amount what you have paid it so what will happen is suppose if you are uh, use if you are paying around 1 lakh rupees if you are paying it for installments then uh, for about 50000 50000 then you have you have to release two receipts then two receipt number has to be entered into that column that is number of uh, vouchers or the receipts here in the sense vouchers and the receipts both are same then from whom we have received it that name the person you have to write it on the third column then amount the cash how much it is there that has to be entered into that the fourth column classification of the receipt that has to be entered into the fifth what kind of receipt it is there that classification whether it is a debit receipt or whether it is a credit receipt date of payment payment side that uh, has to be entered date of payment when it has made sometimes what will happen is that uh, date of receipt they will do it but the date of payment it may change a number of watches you have created for that payment so to whom it is to whom it is paid that has to be matched with uh, the receipt side sometimes uh, the receiver will be different from uh, sometimes it will be left it will be delegated to the bank you can write it there it is a bank it is credited to the bank the payment side whether it is a cash or whether it is a check or whether it is uh, uh, directly left one one column has that has to be uh, entered into there whether it is a neft or whether it is a cash that has to be entered and what kind of how much amount of that is there that has to be balanced whatever the cash is there whether it is uh, uh, same it is received at the bank treasury bank or treasury then uh, is there any charges for doing all this things that has to be uh, entered into this 
uh, cash uh, books of course uh, this is very important column uh, where uh, what kind of data that has to be entered that has to be done carefully so every government officer is uh, personally responsible for the public money with which he deals and for recording the transaction of the receipts and the payment promptly so private cash or the accounts are in no use to be mixed with the public cash or the accounts of course this is very ethical statements in most of the government organizations or the private sector um, whichever the amount either you are spending it through uh, uh, private agencies like uh, through a contractors or uh, through a some of the big companies or through some of the government organizations it is the public money or it is the tax what we have paid it so uh, for that uh, normally uh, some of the systematic protocol has to be maintained to maintain the transparency in the departments. Most of the time what will happen is that the cash book and the ledger books are will be accurately, they will do it. But don't be uh, under the impression of the quality of the work has been done. For the record purpose they will do it because the auditor will come and he will uh, hold the person who has did it. For the record purpose, they will do the tally and they will kept it in the most of the government departments. But when it goes to the field, normally the quality of work is that much is not maintained well. Of course, very important whatever the private cash and uh, this government what, that has should not be mixed in the cash book. It has to be kept separately only. Some of the following instructions. Uh, oh, that has to be maintained in the cash book of course uh, uh, this uh, instructions um, um, we will discuss uh, in the next class of course uh, it requires some time to complete it so because some of the very good instructions are there that we'll discuss in detail